Today I'm going to show you the screen printing press I made to make Cruise in Arizona t-shirts. And if you haven't already, click on subscribe and turn on the notifications. This video is going to show you some of the things you'll need to build your own screen printing press. It's not going to be a full walkthrough, however I will link you to some of the resources I used to figure out how to build this. This video is one of the best videos I watched from The Print Life. It really kind of walks through how to build this screen printing press for really cheap. And I used his instructions on this video to build this press that you see here. The next video I watched was from Ken Industries. This was a very simple, easy to follow instructions on how to start a screen printing business. He broke every section down to the simplest, most economical way you can start screen printing. And I took some of these ideas from his video as well. And here's some of the things I bought online to get this project started. So one of the things I did myself was create my own screens. I followed the Ken Industries video on to make screens and I decided to give it a shot. It wasn't that difficult. Most of the work was really just building the frames. And if you have any skill whatsoever with wood and you have basic hand tools, you can build any frame you would like, any size. I decided to build a 20 by 24 frame and then I covered it with the screen that I bought from Amazon. The most challenging part of this process was to make sure that the screen was tight enough when you stapled it. So as you build this screen, you staple down one side all the way. I put a staple every inch and then I stapled another edge all the way down. From there, I used a excess piece of 2x2 two two and rolled it in the cloth and stretched it out enough that there was enough tension. So the tension you'll need on these screens is if you can bounce a quarter on it, that's tight enough. If it doesn't bounce, you didn't get it tight enough. And if it's too tight, you'll notice that you will rip out the staples or rip the cloth. So there's a happy medium between not tight enough and ripping the cloth, and you'll figure that out. I found that it was easier to, you know, stretch the, the frame if I clamped one of the corners down to the workbench. So as you notice here, there you go. I finally figured it out clamp that thing down and you can actually pull on uh, the frame a little bit tighter. Another trick I learned was to use the hammer and tap in all of these staples. You know, just a little tap, just to make sure they're sunk in all the way. Not everyone needs a tap, but you know what? You can tell when a staple needs to be tapped in. So just go around the edge and tap every one, and just make sure they're flat on the frame. Once the screen was stapled with one row all the way around, I went around and stapled a second, and then I used my scissors and cut off all the excess screen on the outside of the frame. The next step was this great idea that I learned from the Ken Industries video. Uh, he glued the frames of every screen that he made. I didn't have any wood glue, so I decided to actually caulk around the edge of my screens. So I just took my whatever color I had in my shop and I just laid a bead of caulk 
around the edge of every frame. Then once the caulk was down, I used a putty knife and I smoothed out the caulk on the frame. So what this caulk does is it buries these staples uh, in the caulk and prevents them from coming out. And number two, it prevents uh, the screen from fraying and coming loose over time. So it's just a preventative measure that we can you know, help extend the life of the screens. And once your screens have all dried, you throw something non-sharp at it to see if it bounces. And if it bounces, it's tight enough. And after my screens were done, I made a little storage unit for all my screens. I went and got my graphics all done, printed on a clear transparency. And then I got some emulsion at my local print shop. And I bought one of these troughs online on Amazon to smear the emulsion on the frames. So the next step of the process is the most difficult part of screen printing. You have to coat these screens in the dark with your emulsion and let them dry for 24 hours. And then you take your transparencies, what you'd like to burn into the screen, and center it up on the screen and put a piece of glass on it. And then you have to cover it up and take it outside and you have to expose it in the sun. I know, I know, it seems complicated. Just watch these two videos from The Print Life and they'll show you how to do it step by step. Now this all depends on your weather and your sun and you know your exposure times and everything else but luckily after doing all this homework I was able to expose and create a screen to use on my first shot. What I would do the second time is expose it for a full minute. Some of the small details such as the spokes uh, didn't get exposed all the way and kind of rubbed off. I would expose the one next time for a full minute in the sun at noon here in Phoenix, Arizona. Overall, I was pleased with the result and at the end of this process, I had my first working screen to build t-shirts. Now that you've done all this work, you can finally put some ink on some t-shirts. What you'll need is your white ink, get that out something to scoop and smear that ink on the screens, your squeegee, a heat gun or something to cure your ink once it is printed, and something to roll that ink once it's cured. Okay. Video me put the gloves on. Before I printed, I put some painter's tape around the edges of the screens just to make sure no ink gets through. Oh, that is so cool. I'm gonna take this. Yeah. It's like marshmallow. It's it's like marshmallow consistency. That's what it looks like. It looks like the jet marshmallow puff. It it it's like marshmallow goo. The marshmallow stuff you can buy at the store. That I'm gonna comes put that the right like that. Like that. <laughs> okay. I don't want to waste it. Yeah. So I'm just going to put it on. You there. could just scrape it off into the jar when you. Now that you have your ink in your screen, the first step is to flood your screen with ink. Just so, just take your squeegee and dip it in the ink and pull that ink across your screen. When you are doing this, make sure it's held up a little bit so it is not printing on the t-shirt because if it is something like this will happen that's okay because now you press it down against the shirt and do your first official pass 
Just use even firm pressure on the squeegee across the full print. And if you cleared all the ink into the shirt when you lift it up, it should look something like this. Oh yeah, that looks so cool. Now grab your heat gun, put it on high, and set your ink. So what you'll do here is just use your heat gun on the ink three or four inches above it and just keep it moving. Don't leave it in one spot. And your goal is to make sure that all that ink is set. So the way you can tell is after a while, you'll take your finger and you'll just touch the ink and you'll see if any of the ink comes off on your finger. If the ink transfers over to your fingers on your test, keep heating the ink until it doesn't anymore. Test it. It's dry. Once it's dry, take your rolling pin and press down the ink. This will prep it for the second layer of ink that we're gonna print on this image. Then we're gonna fill the screen again with ink. Press that screen against the shirt and use your squeegee and apply that ink to the shirt. Okay, now let's lift it up. Now. Oh yeah, that, <laughs> that looks so cool. <laughs> Now hit it with the heat gun one more time, making sure that it is set. And do your little finger test once again. I would say overall these shirts turned out really good. And hopefully at the end of this video you have the courage to make your own screen printing press at home. And if you would like your own Cruising Arizona t-shirt, they'll be available in a link in the description below. So click on that merchandise link and get yours today. Thanks for watching this video today. If you like this video, go ahead and click on the like button. And click on that subscribe button and turn on your notifications to get notified of new videos every week. Thanks for watching and have a good one.